Hi everybody, uh, welcome back. And now for the fun part, where in this lesson we are going to now set up and implement the, the enemy health and the enemy death system. So this means that whenever we actually shoot against our enemy, we can now hurt him and we can kill him as well. So let's get started. In tools and use script editor, we want to make sure that our enemy script, of course, is loaded. I'm just gonna, excuse me, I'm just gonna full screen this for the time being. And what we're going to do is, we're first of all, we're going to set up a way of basically tracking the, the health of our enemy. And to do this is really easy. We have used things before called variables. And all a variable is, is it's a blank piece of data. It could be a number, it could be a string of text, it could be a game object. And this, um, this, this value inside this container, this little um, variable, is just a container for, for data. We can do anything we want with it. Um, if it's a number, we could over time we could add a, add data onto it, add numbers onto it. We could subtract, divide, multiply, whatever we want to do with it. Numbers you can typically do math with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and add a new variable. It's going to be normally we've been using floats, and floats are numbers that have decimal places. So really, our health, we want to um, be only whole numbers. So in this case, we're going to use something called an int or integer. And an integer variable, as it says, may be or may store a whole number. One, two, three, can also go minus one, minus two, which is perfect for a health system because you don't really want to want, you don't really want to have one and a half health or one and three quarter health, you know. So this just makes it simple. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to, with the integer selected, we're going to give it a name because we're, uh, we actually want to use this throughout different scripts perhaps. So we're going to actually call this enemy health, like so. And it also means that if we copy and paste this and say we have this the same data, these are the same variables here now because they're named. If we change this to 2, this one also changes to 2. To two. So this means that we can reuse this variable throughout scripts and throughout the entire game. Now, for starting off, I'm just going to give our enemy three health. And we could have another script called difficulty, and we could then dynamically change the enemy health to five, and it would actually automatically um, change it in all other scripts. So using variables and um, named variables, or public variables as they're called, can be extremely, extremely powerful. So here's our enemy health variable. I'm just going to make a copy of it. You don't really have to do this, but I like to do that and just place it out of the way. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add in another global update um, event. So we're going to go to add events, um, game events, global update, or you could just search for it. Um, it doesn't really matter. I'm then going to just copy and paste this little owner. I'm going to hit control C, control V to copy and paste. Let's move him out of the way. Get this nice and clean. Technically you can use the same global update node, but this is just, just as handy. Under instance, I'm just going to plug that into owner. Now, what we want to do is we want to basically tell the game to constantly check how much health the the enemy has and compare it against a number that will tell the game whether to kill the enemy or not. So what we're going to do is in the search bar, we're going to use something called compare int. And it's called a comparison. A comparison just checks um, one piece of data against another, typically with uh, with integers. So compare int, it compares integers. Um, I'm just going to turn off my Steam here. Apologies for that. I'll also turn off my Skype. So we'll have no more notifications. Um, so on update, we always want to compare the health of our enemy. So we're just going to plug that into A. And what we want to say is, if our enemy health is anything less than 1, i.e. if it's 0 or any number below that, then we want to destroy our player quite simple. So we're going to, in the B section, we can literally input a value there. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and add a new variable, another integer. Um, and, and I'm not going to give it a name just yet, but I'm going to give this a value of one. This represents our current weapon damage. Now later on in the videos, we may say that we actually want to have different weapons and different uh, weapon damages. So later on we would actually change this to machine gun damage or current weapon damage. So whatever our current weapon is, it will update the value of the damage and then it will um, 
Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm going off my socks here. I'm going ahead of myself. Um, that's in the, the second part. Sorry. Um, just leave that to one. Apologies for that. So under B, we're just going to plug that in. So it's always going to check to see if our enemy health, which is 3, or if we're on a harder difficulty, it might be 5 or 10. So basically, whatever the enemy health is, we're going to compare it with this value of 1. And what we're going to say is, if it's less than, this little guy called less than, if 3 is, um, if our enemy health is less than the value 1, i.e. 0 or below, then it's going to do something. So what we're going to do is, in the search function, this is quite easy, you would think it's kill, but it's not actually kill, it's called destroy. It's called, uh, it helps if I can type. We're going to destroy our game object. It's this very top one under game objects and destroy. So if three is less than one, then plug that into there and it's going to destroy our game object. So what we're going to do is we're just going to right click, add a variable, variables and owner. So if we've got no health left, kill the enemy. Very easy. It's going to save that. Now, currently we can't actually test this. Reason being is that our health isn't actually being changed in the game. For this to happen, we actually need our bullets to start damaging the player. And to do this is also extremely easy. So what we're going to do is, if you kind of think about it, whenever a bullet hits a player, it's doing something called colliding. It's actually um, hitting the... I'm kind of punching with my fist right now. It's um, it's colliding with the, the enemy. It's, there's a collision event happening. And whenever a collision event happens, then a function can happen. So what we're going to do is, in the search bar, we're going to type in on collision. And you want to search for under this guy called physics events. You want to choose on collision. Don't choose on collision 2D because that's for 2D objects. In this case, we want a physics event on collision. So this is going to fire a signal. As it says, it's going to fire a signal when an instance game object receives a collision. And of course, because it's a uh, collision and physics, the game objects must have rigid body components on them. Um, so with that, um, let's have a look. On collision, the instance is going to be our owner. So we're just going to click our owner variable and copy and paste that. Control V, Control, uh, Control C, Control V, plug that in. Now here's the tricky part actually. We have something called triggered by. We actually need to plug something into here to say, well, what's going to actually trigger this? What's going to hit our enemy that's going to trigger this uh, this function? Now, what we can do is we could just type in or find our enemy game object. However, in the game we have lots of game or we have lots of, um, sorry, bullets. We have lots of bullets in the game, so we can't actually pinpoint, you know, all of the bullets at once. So you may remember earlier we made something called tags. So if I click my bullet prefab, and under tank we have a tag called bullet. And this is pretty much just a group. Okay, so all these prefabs have a tag called bullet. And that is a way of actually tagging a group of objects to, to actually be kind of filtered in this event. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in another uh, node called get game objects by tag. Get game objects by tag. And this will return um, all the game objects in a scene that have a specific tag. So we're going to click that and we're just going to plug it in like so. What this is going to do is on collision enter it's going to get a game object by tag. It's going to find what the tag is. Now we're just going to right click oh sorry we're just going to click in here and under tag we need to exactly type whatever our tag is. So mine is called bullet with a capital B so under tag, we're going to put in bullet. Under first game object, we're going to right click and add a variable called uh, not owner game ob object, but just game object on its own. Let's try that again. Uh, variables game object. So whatever this game object is with the tag bullet, it's going to put that game object into this variable. So now what we can do is under this trigger by, we can plug that in. So now it knows that this is the guy that hit it, okay? So this is the guy that hit it. This is the guy that's actually causing this stuff to happen, um, this, this uh, trigger. So what do we want to do whenever this actually happens, when a bullet actually hits the enemy? 
Well, we just want to take our enemy health and subtract it by one. So it takes one health off us. And that's really easy to do. So under the search, just type in subtract. You know, see how intuitive this is. Um, under int, we can just subtract an integer. So as soon as that's finished, it's going to subtract an integer. We're going to copy our player health, control C and control V, and plug that into A. And this is what I was talking about earlier when I got a bit mixed up. The amount it's going to subtract by is actually going to be the damage of the weapon. So for the time being, we're not really um, bothered about having multiple weapons because this is just prototype. Um, later on in a maybe a bonus video, we might have multiple weapons. But for the time being, we're just going to have an int value. And I'm not going to give it a name yet. Under value, we're just going to put in 1, so a weapon damage of 1. So every time the bullet hits the enemy, this is going to subtract 1. And as a result, it will give us our new enemy health. And the easy way to do that is just to copy the enemy health uh, integer and paste it across. So enemy health is 3, you're hit. Take away 1, and then it outputs it back into enemy health. So now 3 has become 2. Get hit again, it'll run through this again. 2 enemy health with 1, and um, it'll deduct it by 1. So now we'll have 1 health. Uh, we've got one health left, get hit by another bullet, takes off another health, now this is zero. But because now that this is zero, then this guy fires. So it detects that um, our enemy health is less than the value one because it's now a value of zero. And then that's going to destroy our enemy. So happy days. Now normally I'll get you to test this, but there's one more thing we need to do. And that is, at the moment you may have remembered that whenever we shoot an enemy with a bullet, the bullet just kind of um, is stopped. Um, by the enemy because there is a collider. So what we also need to do is now as soon as a bullet hits an enemy it also needs to be destroyed. Normally the bullet will kill itself after a few seconds. Now this is again is really easy to do. So as soon as we have subtracted our health away now what we need to do is we need to bring in another destroy node. So instead of just searching I'm just going to click on this destroy node and just hit Control and C to copy and Control and V to paste. You can also right click and hit copy and paste. So I'm going to bring that in there and throw that in there. Now for our target, this has to be the bullet that actually hit the player. It can't be all objects by the tag of bullet. It needs to be that specific game object that hit our enemy. And of course we all know that it's this guy here. So we just drag this into this and we're done. So I'm going to click file and save. This is going to compile our script. So this is the damage system and this is the health system. It's going to close out of this and I'm going to press play. So I'm going to shoot him once and it's not destroying. Two, three. So we've got one little bug there. That's very strange. I'm going to play again, see what's happening. Okay, so it nearly works. We I did do this right before, so I need to just retrace my steps. Um, I'm just going to quickly pause here and see what's happening. So guys, um, oops, it's just compiling. Like I said, I did literally do this about 15 minutes ago, and it's very confusing why it doesn't work. But what I'm going to do is, <coughs> it's just not killing the very first bullet. But I'm actually just going to show you another way that we can actually go about doing this. I'm just going to delete this little destroy node. Okay, so this is as it was. We can actually go into our bullet script and click on yes just to save those changes. And this is our bullet script that happens whenever um, we fire a bullet, it adds relative force and it destroys itself. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a global update. And I'm just going to add that in there. Under the instance, we're just going to copy our owner and paste. We're nearly done, folks. So that's that. We're going to bring in an on collision node on collision. And under instance, it's also going to be our owner. Then we're going to use the same get objects by tag. Get game objects by, oops, by tag. Going to plug that into the update event. 
under tag we're going to type in enemy or whatever we have in here so enemy tag so this is going to now look for all the enemies so if the bullet hits an enemy at any time then it's going to destroy itself and this should work because I have another copy of it on the screen which does work and this is the thing of game development you you do one thing you, you make something and then something else breaks it's it's always the way it goes unfortunately so under variables we're going to go to a game object so whatever enemy tag is it'll put in as a game object I'm going to plug that up like so so it will now detect if the bullet has now hit an enemy and when that happens we're just going to destroy itself so on that collision enter destroy the owner I'm just going to plug that like that now with that it should now work if it doesn't I'm I'm going to have a quick rage <laughs> it's going to hit X and play so and it doesn't work well done okay guys after a lot of fighting I just fixed it there so here we have the same script here the only thing I've changed is that under triggered by it normally was triggered by the bullet but actually it works the other way around the the bullet that we get from the tag actually needs to be plugged into this on collision instance for some reason it's a strange bug and um, I'll see what the crack is with that really um, so on collision destroy instance is plugged into this guy this guy's plugged into the first game object and of course our tag and whenever I save that and test it and hit play we can now shoot normally it was actually being collided by itself which is what was happening but now whenever we hit our enemy one two three he now dies okay so sorry about the few uh, confusions there but there we go we now have an enemy set up that follows and looks at our uh, player we also have a health system with the enemy so he now has three health the game is constantly checking or just within the enemy prefab so every enemy is constantly checking how much health they have and if they've got less than one health i.e. zero or below then they kill themselves and then our bullet is set up so that if a bullet hits the enemy the bullet will be destroyed but it will also before it dies it will inflict one amount of damage so it'll actually just subtract from the health and of course whenever we run out of health the enemy then dies so hopefully now we we now have a more functional functional um, uh, prototype and hopefully now it's a lot more enjoyable so and uh, now what we'll do is in the next video we will now do the opposite we will now set up a health system for our player and a way for our enemies to actually kill our player which is a lot more fun so see you in the next video thank you